Joining me now is Dr. Obi Ezekwesili, the co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls movement. You're welcome to the program. You're welcome there. The Vice President says that the rescue of the Chibo girls is top priority for this administration. Do you believe that? I think that I will be more persuaded um, by that when I see certain milestones. A key milestone um, that we had discussed with President Buhari when together with the parents we saw him July 2015 and then had to repeat again um, in um, January, January 14th, uh, 2016 is the necessity for there to be a system for progress report to the parents of these children. I mean, how can the government be so distant to people who suffer tragedy? We, governance is about the people. And so it is good to hear that it remains a priority. We actually believed when they said that they would not consider Nigeria to have defeated terrorism or to have won victory over terrorism without the rescue of Achibo girls and other abducted citizens of the country. If they are reiterating that priority, it's important that it be seen to be so. At this moment, it is not as persuasive as the Vice President I would like to continue same. on that by asking how you would access, assess the approach to the rescue of the girls. Well, you know, when we met with the President January 14th and the President's response seven months after he had um, persuaded the parents of our Chibo girls as well as our movement, that our Chibo girls was top, uh, our topmost uh, priority for him, their rescue uh, would be um, just so crucial to his administration. And then um, we, we said, oh well, he remains consistent with what he said during his inauguration, that he would not consider uh, Nigeria to have defeated Boko Haram without the rescue of our Chibo girls. We were quite elated to see that. However, by the time we returned to visit seven months after, without the setting up of this platform to enable a quarterly progress report to the parents as well as to um, concerned uh, Nigerians and other citizens of the world who have followed this matter, we then heard from our president that there was no credible intelligence on the whereabouts of the girls. Now, we had heard that when he said it to the, um, to, uh, the, the journalists that interviewed him uh, during his presidential media chat in December. But when he then said it again to us on the, on, on, on the 14th of January, then we sort of thought to ourselves, does our president think that simply telling us that, that he doesn't have credible intelligence on the whereabouts of the girls would be sufficient? You know, even if our president said, we don't have, I don't have credible intelligence on the whereabouts of the girls, even though I have been seven months in office and my predecessors had had this problem for at least um, 13 months before I took over from them. However, I assure you, that these and these and these are things that I am doing. It doesn't end with, I don't have credible intelligence. It is, then I will do so and so. We didn't get that sense, and that was very disappointing. Now, the military is succeeding in the fight against insurgency. There, but there is still no news about the Chibok girls. Is this, did you still hold the hope that they can be rescued? Oh, I certainly have enduring hope. I mean, this, 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 the theme for us, uh, uh, you know, um, marking two years of the abduction is hope endures. 
You know, hope does not make us ashamed. Hope is eternal. Hope reigns supreme. The day we stop hoping is the day we die, even if we're alive. You know, so for us, we believe that our Chibo girls can still be rescued. That's why we're standing for them. We made a pledge at the very beginning of our advocacy that we're going to stand until our Chibo girls would be found. At the time we were making that pledge, we actually thought that we were going to deal with a three weeks at the maximum, a one month situation. And it went from month to month. And today we're two years and we have refused to back down on that pledge. It is the sense of character that we have as a movement that once we stepped out for these girls, it is not proper for us to stop being that light that would shine and say, don't forget these girls. Our cheaper girls are never to be forgotten. I believe, as most of our members believe, if not every one of our members, that our cheaper girls are alive. There is no contra, there's no counter factual evidence to say to us that they are not. So we hold on to it that our cheaper girls are alive. Our military has indeed rebuilt our confidence in many ways. I mean, for us as a movement, one of the, some of the toughest days were those days that we would be here at the Unity Fountain saying, bring back our girls, bring back our girls now and their life. And then in the evening news, they would show us video of our military running from Boko Haram. My goodness, those were terrible days for us. We would say, who is going to bring back our girls if our military is running from Boko Haram? We, it, was, it was the most psychologically traumatizing period to see the Nigerian military reduced to that. So we are one of those uh, in this country that say of our military, thank God that they have reclaimed the stature that we associated with with that institution. They have been able to reclaim territories, perhaps even all of the territories. Uh, they have been able to establish some semblance of order in uh, those territories that were in the eye of the storm during those days. They have been able to uh, find um, and recover citizens that we did not know had been taken over by Boko Haram as soon as they occupied the territories. So all of that is good. All of that is critical. All of those, all of those things that I've said are major milestones in the proof that we're winning the war. The point is, our Chibok girls are a symbol of, of the final victory over Boko Haram, uh, as the president rightly stated in his own inauguration speech. And that's why we believe that rescuing them is super priority. We will go on a short break now, and when we return, we'll tell you more about the belief of the Bring Back Our Girls campaign group on the rescue of the Chiba girls. We must exercise. We must exercise some caution and patience, and not uh, um, sound as if, well, this must, this this can be done, but it's not being done. I don't think that that's right. I believe that everything that um, can be done, especially with respect to the rescue of those girls, is being done, uh, but. There are, of course, challenges, and we're trying to address those challenges.